So, yeah, great. Okay, thank you for coming. Uh, this is a bit awkward because usually with such a small group, I would just sit at the stage and uh, give my little presentation there. But um, we decided that we wanted to record the, the introduction for uh, future uses, which is why I'm doing it uh, like a proper speaker behind the lectern. Um, welcome. Heralds are the faces of the event, the people that uh, announce and introduce our speakers that provide context and um, introduction to all the dip difficult and technical topics that we are discussing on this event. And heralds uh, keep the show running and make sure that to the crowd it all feels smooth and well organized, even if it isn't in the back end. So let's start with the uh, biggest no-nos that you shouldn't ever uh, we do. Uh, there's just four points. For, first of all, uh, try not to be late. This is rather important because uh, the Herald is the timekeeper of the event and for uh, day one we managed to not have any delays whatsoever in none of the tracks, which is what we aim for and this can only work if you are on time. The second thing, uh, mispronounce the speaker name. If you introduce a speaker, the worst thing you can possibly do is to mispronounce the name. Therefore, we ask you to uh, ask the speaker like two or three or four times until he is happy with the way you pronounce his name. Remember it and then do it the same way on stage. Uh, you can make a mistake with everything else, it's totally fine, but the speaker name has to be correct. You can even mispronounce the talk title, this is not, 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 a, not a problem at all, but the speaker name is the very important thing. Uh, also, a habit that I and others share is that sometimes we, we speak too fast and this doesn't work on stage. Like, you need to speak so slow that it feels dumb and silly to you uh, and then it's perfect. Also, take your time and take a break in between, take a, take a breath. It's much better and also never forget about the time because the speaker and all the other groups in the hall uh, are relying on your cues on what to do when. You are basically the master of the show in, in any uh, lecture hall and make sure that everything runs on time. But, but I think the most visible uh, thing is to introduce the speaker. So how to do that? How to create a great introduction? Intr introductions are supposed to be short. Five sentences maybe in total. So. Um, I recommend to read the talk description, which you're going to get on one of these fancy talk cards, printed automatically, uh, and um, to mark three keywords in the description. Just highlight them for you, and then cr uh, create one sentence for each of the keywords, uh, and use that sentence uh, for the talk description, and then you s s speak a bit about the speaker. You should Google the speaker beforehand, you should find out what the speaker is uh, doing, uh, and what you can say about him and also make sure to try to turn up anything about the speaker that he wouldn't say about himself. For example, if a, if a, a magazine wrote about that person that he was one of the top 100 thinkers of 2015, uh, then uh, no speaker could say that about himself without looking like an arrogant asshole. Uh, therefore, uh, it's our job to make our speakers shine and. Uh, to yeah, show how awesome they all are. And you, we need to research these prestigious facts and uh, uh, titles that the media gave them. Maybe he has a PhD that he's not talking about because he's uh, modest. Uh, so use these informations to create one or two sentences about the speaker. Try to avoid brand names. If, like, if the speaker is working for whatever, let's say Apple, uh, then only mention it if it's relevant for the talk. Uh, if it's not relevant for, uh, for the talk, then brand names and companies are not relevant for the introduction. Uh, also, uh, you will be using a microphone, uh, like the one I'm holding right now. Um, and this is rather important that you make yourself understandable to the crowd. Therefore, um, you should uh, use a proper distance f uh, f for the microphone to your mouth. And I uh, show you a little trick here. Uh, grab the microphone like this and then extend your thumb like this. And if you then put your thumb against your chin, you automatically have the perfect distance. No one can see your thumb, it doesn't look idiotic from the front, 
but uh, you have it fixed in place and in the correct position to provide the best audio quality possible. If this volume level now, because I'm really close to the microphone, is too loud, don't worry about it. We have a competent angel in every hall in the back that's regulating the volume for this precise reason. He, he has an easy time to uh, reduce the volume. It's easy for him or for her, uh, but uh, to increase the volume, there is a certain limit to it. So let me demonstrate uh, what happens when I uh, decrease the distance from the microphone. Uh, <clears throat> you see there is the upper frequencies and the lower frequencies. Uh, are, uh, yeah, you're hearing less and less of that, and this is harder to understand me the further away I am. And if he then continues to increase the volume, then it's yeah, very hard to understand. So uh, stay close to the microphone, then he has enough level to play with and enough uh, frequency uh, to work on, and he's there to make you quieter, not louder in the best case. Um, yes, yeah, so handle like that. Don't cover the uh, ball part with your hand, so your fingers should be below this ball part, and extend your thumb. This is a good trick for uh, us, I have to say. Uh, because a mixing desk is uh, no sewage treatment plant, if you put shit in, shit comes out. There's just, just no way to fix that. Um, next thing, how to move on stage. Um, there are some key locations on every stage. So uh, we, have the, um, we, have, we have the lectern, obviously, for the talk part. But if you introduce a speaker, you usually want to have a bit more attention from the crowd. And the most attention-getting spot on every stage is the center stage, up front. Note, there are lights up here. If you move too far up front, then your face is in the dark and you can't be seen by the cameras or by the crowd anymore. So stay about half a meter, three quarters of a meter back from the front of the stage for the call to action point, I call it. Like it's, it's perfect to make an announcement, to get the crowd to do something, to cheer, to uh, yeah, get, get them to do an action is the best spot. If you're giving background information and uh, elaborating on something or it not being the center of the attention right now, move further back, or even move to the side. If there is a speaker right here doing a Q&A, then you want to move to the side in the less attention-grabbing spot. Uh, I think this is, do I forgot a point? Yes, also uh, move, you, you should move on, on a stage. The bigger the stage is, the more you should move, otherwise it'll just be static and boring. And the dynamic of moving is rather important uh, to, to show confidence, and only with confidence it, uh, you can control a crowd. Uh, some tents are quite big, this rather not so much, but uh, this means you need to adjust the gestures and the size of your gestures to the size of the tent. So a small gesture just won't be visible at the end or won't have any effect anymore. So do big movements with your arms and with your whole body. And same thing... <coughs> Same thing goes for emotions. Show big emotions. If it feels silly big, it's probably just right. So you cannot display too much emotions or energy unless you're Nick Farr. Um, last thing before you can get to try being a herald, uh, jokes. Jokes are, jokes are important. Jokes are amazing, and they work really well for three main purposes. Uh, first is it's an icebreaker. If, the, if a speaker is nervous and standing here and doesn't know what to do and how to act and is a bit, bit nervous, you can loosen up the crowd by making a joke uh, that the whole crowd laughs about, and then the speaker will loosen up, the crowd will loosen up, and there's less tension in the room. Works great. Also, in the early morning, sometimes uh, the crowd is really, uh, let's say, tired and doesn't have much, much energy. So a good joke gives the crowd energy and wakes them up and uh, helps them to focus on the upcoming talk. And it also can be used uh, to catch time. Sometimes we need more time for technical setup, for setting up the speaker laptop, for someone is not there where they're supposed to be, or the speaker is not ready or had to run to the toilet, something like that. So we don't want to uh, leave the crowd hanging. We, we, we rather try to entertain them and stall for one or two minutes. Katsatsi, would you be so kind, please? Um, yeah, so jokes. Um, rather do it than don't. If you're unsure whether your joke is good enough, just do it, because um, there is the sitcom effect. If like 10, 15, 20% of the crowd laugh about your joke, and the rest doesn't like the joke, it doesn't matter, because 
people don't know how many percent actually laughed. And, there's, and the sitcom effect, if there is some laughter, others will join in automatically. So don't worry if the joke is not, not perfect or you're not sure whether it's good enough, still do it. Except for if it's a sexual or political, uh, because we, we don't want that. Just, just uh, do any other joke than that. So, um, I would love if you could be a herald for now, and I'm pretty sure that any one of you remembers a talk from a conference in the past that somehow stood out, that was amazing, where the speaker was really cool, or where the t topic was really cool. And I, I would love if you could um, queue up here at the stair uh, stairs, grab my microphone, and uh, do an impromptu, improvised introduction, five sentences, for any talk that you particularly enjoyed in the past. And we'll then, as a group, uh, give you a bit of feedback on what to improve before I'll continue with my uh, rambling uh, presentation. Um, if you have never been to a conference before and have no clue what to say or what talk to pr present now, then uh, make something up, which is totally fine. So about five to six sentences, and yeah, let's go. Who wants to be first? Hello, welcome. Uh, next speaker is very famous for a big fruit company in America, and he also found an algorithm for creating pancake cryptography. So please welcome Mr. Alexander Eerden. I just give the feedback into the microphone for the recording. So, uh, yes, do breathe in between sentences. And actually, like, taking a whole second between a sentence to just breathe and do nothing it feels weird, but does increase your authority on stage enormously. Taking the confidence and the time to just breathe for a second or two while leaving the crowd waiting, it's an enormously powerful tool. Next, please. Right, welcome. Um, thank you for joining us today. Well, it's even hot here in the tent. Uh, next speaker is my grandma, actually. She's very good at baking raspberry pies. So uh, she's gonna tell you the best recipe for baking recipe pies, uh, raspberry pies. So here's my grandma. Maybe say the name of the speaker. <laughs> say the name of the speaker, maybe. But yeah, apart from that, very good. Yes, exactly. Like you can replace all the fill words like so or ah, uh, um, uh, by just a pause, a pause of authority. It works. It, I know, but if you start to speak silly slow, you actually have the time in your mind to interfere with yourself before you make a pause word, and then you just make a pause instead of a fill word. Next one. So let me repeat the microphone. Uh, it was very good that you looked towards your speaker and towards your crowd. Next one, please. Oh, you can already stand here, so we do this a bit quicker, one after the other. Welcome, dear hackers. Welcome to the day seven of this conference. And I appreciate, you, I appreciate that you all stood up this early to come to this very important speak. Um, I'd like to introduce you to the next speaker, which is uh, Mr. So-and-so of the company So-and-so. He read a very important 
an article about privacy on the internet. So please welcome Mr. So and So. So uh, very good, but uh, do please uh, use this microphone trick because sometimes you sp spoke here while the microphone was there. Uh, uh, do use that. I like this one. Yeah. Exactly. Hello there, people. Very welcome to you all for this very uh, early morning. Exactly. Next, please. Yes, great. Hello, everybody, to this conference. Yeah. This conference about saunas. Everybody loves saunas. And we have today a really special guest about saunas. He knows saunas since the beginning of saunas in Finland. And he has so much credibility about this topic. Let me introduce you to Mr. So-and-so. Feedback. Don't wear caps on stage because they will make, produce a shadow on your face. Uh, I mean, you, you can if, if you put the thing to the back, but not to the front. Yes, that, that, if, if, if you feel comfortable with that look, yes, sure, sure, like that. Um, but apart from that, uh, do use your voice. Uh, don't whisper. Like, do use a, a, a strong voice. He's there to make you quieter. You are there to be loud. Okay, great. Thanks. Who's next? You on the bike, or you back there on the red shirt, or your your partner, or the person on the, on the laptop uh, in the back there. No. Okay. Thanks. So we get four new heroes today. Great. Um, yeah, let's try being a hero. That would have been the slide for it. Um, okay, Q&A. After a talk, some speakers do have time for a question and answers. And every tent has one or two of these question microphones there. So, but we as a herald, we try to curate the questions a tiny bit, which is very hard. But some people, like, we know them from other conferences, for example, or we know how they behave uh, on a microphone. And so we, we look out for them, and then we try to use the other microphone if we expect not a question, but a comment or some long rant or uh, a story of uh, the last holiday. Um, questions are totally okay. Comments are not so much. The limit is pretty much if, if someone gives a sentence for context and then gives an introduction, introductory sentence to the question and then poses the question, that's fine. That's three sentences. But if someone like starts with, well, you showed this and that, and maybe it wouldn't be, wouldn't it be better to use this or that, like hides his comment in the form of a question, that's not okay. You just, so we try to interfere there, if possible. And we are the professional assholes that cut people off. We, we do that so our speakers don't have to. That's, that's the idea, that we are the people on stage that make our speakers shine no matter how, no matter what they do. And we take care of everything else, even if we have to shift blame on us for something that is completely not our fault. Um, if, the micro if the question is really good but wasn't asked into a microphone, then please do repeat it. And uh, if we see a usual suspect at a microphone, we use the other microphone for the next questions. Um, yes, try to get people to pose short questions and do interfere in such a way that if the speaker has answered a question, always say, thank you for that answer. Please, next question from this microphone. Always do that, even if it's obvious and it could self-regulate, because this gives, you, uh, gives the crowd and the people at the microphones the idea that you will be saying something before they can, uh, which also means that it's easier for you to interrupt someone because they are used to you saying something after each question. Even if it's just to thank your next question, please. But that's totally enough. Okay, timing, timing, timing. Timing is the most important thing for us, Heralds. We want to start every talk within 30 seconds of the planned time, if it's anyhow possible. For example, 
a camera angel might not be there, or an audio angel might not be there, or a video angel might not be there, so we just can't start. That would be a valid reason to, to stall time. But if anyhow possible, we want to start uh, in time. So uh, yes, there will be a duty deck for each stage. I'm going to talk about that. So you can have a, so you have a deck to call for additional volunteers if you need them, if someone is missing. Uh, and also, we only have 10 minutes between each talk, which is very, uh, which is for this 10 possibly okay. But for the bigger 10s, it's a, a, a very short amount of time to get all the people out and get the new crowd in for the new talk. So. From this follows that we cannot really grant overtime. The absolute limit there is one minute. Like if a speaker absolutely needs to have some overtime, then he can have this one single minute, but not more. Um, Katsatsi, would you demonstrate please uh, how to interrupt the speaker that is uh, absolutely not finding an end? Um, so if necessary, cut off the speaker uh, and shift all the blame on yourself completely. Make the speaker look good no matter what, even if it's his fault for coming late to the talk and doesn't have enough time. <laughs> no, first, first of all, you stand next to the speaker like Katsatsi is doing right now. And then you poke the speaker a bit. And if this doesn't, uh, it doesn't work, you say a sentence like... Thank you. Um, sorry, but the time is up. It was a very, very nice talk, and I believe we are all interested to hear more of this. Maybe everybody who is interested to learn a little bit more, just come over here and ask your questions further and discuss them with the speaker. Thank you, Ion, for this talk. And the next talk will be... You may grant one last sentence. Like, you interrupt the speaker and say, hey, you really need to stop now, politely, as she did. And you may then give the speaker the opportunity to end it gracefully with one sentence. Uh, and then you continue on. But yes, exactly right. Um, by the way, Katatsi is helping out with organizing the Herald. So if I'm not available or, or, or Witchdog is not available, she is an awesome team member that's helping out and will answer all your questions. Um, yes. We have time cards uh, that we show. C would you be so kind and get them and pre pre pretend that you are the herald for this talk? Um, so we inform the speaker of how, many, how much time they have left with these cards. Uh, lift them up, Katsatsi, yes. So for example, there's a, this would mean there are 20 minutes left in my slot. And I nod to Katsatsi so she knows that I have seen it and I'm aware of how much time I have left. We have 20, 15, 10, and 5 minutes, and we don't have a zero sign because we just do this. Okay, what happens if a tent is completely full? Because, like, we have regulations, and this is all fireproof and fire safety and security and stewards and municipality and regulations and emergency exits and all of that, blah, blah. In the end, it boils down to every tent has a set capacity of persons that may be at any time in there. This capacity is equal to the number of chairs in the tent. If all the chairs are taken, then the tent is full and we need to close it and we're not allowed to put in any more people. Uh, at that point, you need door angels. You need someone at the door who says, no, you can't get in. I'm sorry, the tent is full. Please watch, please watch the stream. Uh, and you, do, you can get door angels by calling heaven, 8568, and tell them that it's urgent that, that you need door angels. You have a decked phone for that. And afterwards, we inform the stewards, uh, 2222, of that decision, so they know as well that the tent is full and uh, that, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get to that. There is a slide. Um, uh, so f how do you fill every seat efficiently in 10 minutes? Stage one, you see, oh, over there, there are like 20, 30, uh, 40 free seats. You go to the center of the stage, so you're a call to action point, and you say, oh, over there, there are some free seats. Please, please move over there for everybody that's in the aisles uh, that is searching for a seat. If that ha has been done, you ask the crowd to compress, to defragmentate. So it would work like that, so please stand up, and now please move away from the ales inward if you can. If there is a free seat away from the ales, move towards that free seat and sit down. So, we get the free, so in the end, we have all the free seats on the easily reachable outsides and can direct people there. But at some point, this will also fail because there is just not enough room to defragmentate. 
And then we do the uh, last trick thing, uh, which is please lift your arm if there is a free seat next to you. And after stage two, after the defragmentation, we usually close the doors already and ask everyone that hasn't found a seat to leave. Uh, but, but then we can get some people in by this hands up thing. So if, if I see like three hands up and so equaling three, three seats, then I ask the door angel, hey, door angel, there, please get in three people for this and that, and that seat. And that way we can efficiently, within two or three minutes, fill a complete tent by a bit of crowd control from the Herald on stage. Yeah. Uh, sometimes fuck ups happen all the time. And we always try to cover them up. That's, that's our job, to make the speakers, make the event, make the organization shine, uh, and let it shine bright. So sometimes we need to stall. The speaker doesn't show up. The speaker is late. Some angel is missing. Something technical uh, happened to fuck up, whatever. And the Herald is there to entertain the crowd. It's not there to solve the immediate problem. The immediate problem is solved by some other angel. For example, by your second herald, also in the hall, or by the angels at the uh, appropriate desks. We are there to entertain the crowd. So we could, for example, um, ask questions. Like, Did you, uh, are you enjoying camp? Who traveled more than 500 kilometers? Um, do you like our cleaning crew? Stuff like that. Um, obviously, we don't have a cleaning crew, so Give a, give a warm round of applause to your cleaning crew. Applause. And then, okay, now look left and right. You see your cleaning crew. Please take out your trash. Works all the time. Simple joke, works. If the timing is right. Uh, you can also make typical announcements. Drink more water, use more wired bandwidth, use sunscreen, uh, relax and get some sleep, uh, care, care about your other campers. Um, works always. Uh, tell a joke as a way to uh, stall time if necessary. Uh, so I think you get the gist how to stall, how to bridge some, some minutes. And you can always come up with some small story uh, that, that you experienced, something that was awesome. So I came to camp and suddenly I heard this whoosh yesterday evening and I looked around and I saw what's that and I saw, whoa, there's a huge fire installation on that tower over there. That was amazing. Who saw that yesterday? Yeah, it works all the time. Uh, and everybody has such small experiences to tell on stage if, if time needs to be stalled. So usually we have one herald per tent, but on this event we have two for a specific reason. We would like the heralds to pick up the speaker at the speaker desk. So we have this backstage and onstage separation thing. So a shift of three, maybe three and a half hours has, let's say, three or four talks. And um, one of you starts as being the herald on stage, and the other is the herald backstage. So Katsatsi would carry the phone, for example, and would have the timesheets and would make sure that it's all on time while I'm on stage and doing other stuff. So she could also go around and give the door angels an, an information like, please close this door or please make this exit only or something like that. Um, that works. And me as the uh, other herald would then go get the speaker. Uh, this is all in detail on the checklist. Would you please wave them or distribute them? Um, so, y so you see whose duty is what, but after every talk within a shift, you switch so it doesn't get boring. And b both heralds get some stage time. Wait, we used to have four that wanted. Damn it. Huh. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, he did. Um, so, cheat sheets, yes, you, you, you just got them. Let me quickly run through them. We're still in time, that's good. So, at the start of the shift, you meet your other herald and say hi, get, get familiar with the person, um, and agree with the person on who will be the first herald. Uh, so, let's call them A and B as it's on the thing. A is the onstage, B is the backstage herald. Um, then you go to the speaker desk and pick up your speaker. And while you walk with your speaker to your tent, you already have some time to ask important questions. For example, how would you like to be introduced? Some speaker gives you an information that you just couldn't research on the way. So, and at that point, you're not supposed to replace your introduction. You're supposed to add on to it. You may pick a fact from what the speaker tells you and add it on to what you already prepared. Um, then, obviously, how do I properly pronounce your name? The most important question. And then, what do you want me to tell the crowd about you? 
what I said, like media labels, top 100 thinkers of the world, awards, uh, honorary PhDs from some university, something like that. And also, uh, some speakers have a one-hour slot, but have a talk that's only 40, 45, 50 minutes. So they have time for Q&A. But some speakers don't want Q&A, others want. So we asked them, would you like to have some Q&A time afterwards? And how, how he likes to be acknowledged of the time. So you show, you inform the speaker that you expect him to nod as soon as you show him the time sign. Um, so you know that he knows. Then obviously offer some water and ask if the speaker needs anything else. Before a talk, you should uh, do a couple of things. So for example, you, you should meet up with the AV crew and say hi so they know who you are, so you can get the microphone, so you can ask whether it's up and running or whether uh, some technical problem has arisen that you need to bridge or cover up. Uh, you also get the duty decked from the uh, 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 Herald before or from um, the, the desk over there. And you check whether they're all ready. If usually there is a speaker from the last talk standing somewhere there or somewhere there and there is a bunch of people around uh, that speaker that want to talk to that person. Don't move that crowd. Move the speaker. Go to the speaker, tap him on the shoulder and say, hey, thanks for the talk. Great that you be here, but could you please take your crowd somewhere else so we can continue with the next talk? And the speaker will then just grab and they'll follow him naturally. <laughs> no problem. So move the carrot and not try to move the crowd. Um, yeah, before a talk, yes, yes. Please do, do ask questions. Yes, it's, it's, it's minutes before the slot of the talk starts. Um, help with crowd control for the B. Uh, herald, uh, and um, yes, then there is a tent full section, as I explained earlier, the same information there. Uh, starting a talk, yes, first, first I do crowd control, I fill the hall, I do the defragmentation game, I ask to, for people to raise their arm when there is a free seat next to you, uh, and then I do some announcements. There are necessary announcements. Right now we have as an important announcement that we announce that we need more angels. That please, if you want to help out make this event awesome, go to the heaven, go to the info desk, re register to be an angel. There are plenty of shifts that are still open. Please join, please help us. Uh, all of this works on volunteers exclusively. That's an important announcement that we currently have, and today and tomorrow will do before every talk. Other announcements are drink more water, use sunscreen, protect yourself, stay safe, don't get too drunk. Um, the usual uh, stuff so people are reminded, have I drank enough water? Have I? Uh, maybe I should. Um, that, that helps. Um, during a talk there are no safe seats. Like if, if, if you're waiting for your friend and he ha just hasn't shown up and the, and the tent is full, you can't reserve a seat. We'll place someone on that seat and we need to explain that to the crowd. Otherwise, we'll have half the seats empty. And we can't work uh, with door angels that uh, keep people from entering while there are some uh, free seats still available. We can't explain that to the people out there. Uh, check emergency exits if they are free and usable uh, during a talk. So if there are people standing or sitting there uh, because they couldn't get in, we, would need to, uh, we need to ask them to move. And also, yeah, ask people that didn't found a seat and still smuggled themselves in to leave if necessary. Yeah, also check if all present are fine. As in, is the audio angel collapsing? Is he still breathing? Now nah, looks good. Um, call for help if needed. There is a bunch of numbers uh, on there. Communicate well with your other herald whenever you need to and signal the time for the speaker and the, uh, or the herald on stage. Because I, um, I, I can take out my phone and look at the clock, but it doesn't look really good. And it's better if the other herald, Katatsi in this case, would, would show me like two minutes left, three minutes left, so I can judge, okay, one more question or uh, no more question, we don't have any time anymore. Stuff like that. Yeah. Sometimes the herald that is not on stage knows a lot more about the current situation than the herald on stage, so you need to communicate that. And a good way to do that is uh, during the Q&A, the herald usually stands somewhere over here. And uh, then the other herald can get to that corner and say, and I'll be like, 
and, and she can tell me something. That, that works really well and is not disturbing the crowd or the speaker. If you need to walk behind the speaker, it's, it's, it's not so sexy. So do it on the opposite side of the stage if you need to talk to your herald. So we... Yes, you can walk behind uh, uh, the screens and the stages on all, in all chance. We heralds, we communicate with the Rocket Chat app because it's an incredible amount of work to schedule all the shifts to make sure that everyone is where they are supposed to be. So if you are scheduled for a shift and you can't make it, please communicate with the Rocket Chat. Also, we'll publish the announcements that are currently necessary uh, in there and uh, inform people of what to do. Also, it's a nice way to exchange yourself to maybe get some feedback on whether a, good, whether a joke is good, uh, discuss things you... Uh, thinking about saying on stage, uh, it's, it's a nice tool, I think. It's open source, it's like an open source Slack alternative. There are apps available for all the mobile systems except the Windows Mobile, but the browser uh, version of it works really well as well. For iOS, I have to say, uh, in the App Store, the Rocket Chat Plus app is first. Don't install that, that doesn't work. Uh, use the Rocket Chat without a plus. Uh, that's not first in the App Store, but it works. The other one doesn't. Without a plus, yes. Um, yeah, if you install that app, you're going to be asked to specify which server you like to connect to, and it's heralds.events.cc.de for most events. And uh, please use the same username that you've used in the Angel system already, so we know who we are talking about and can assign you the shifts that you did. Uh, yeah, Android system, talking about Android system. Uh, please create an account if you haven't already. Please click on the team speaker desk Herald and join it. Heralds are part of the speaker desk. Uh, and then, yeah, the URL where you can do that. Um, the duty deck is something I want to talk about. Uh, the duty deck is something that you hand over from one shift to the other. And it's very important that there is always a person that would pick it up if it rings, because the number is more or less secret. The speaker desk has the number, the security has the number, the uh, a project management team has the number, and the safety team has the number. So um, I would call there and find out uh, if everything is all right, for example, and find out if, it's, uh, if everything is on track and working on time. But also, if there is an announcement to make, for example, car with license plate so-and-so has to be moved urgently, or please evacuate the camp, uh, anything like that will pop up on this phone and someone will call this tent to make sure that this announcement goes through. If you can't make an announcement because there is no power or a power outage, there is a megaphone that uh, is there for power outages but also to fulfill the regulatory uh, uh, rules of the Netherlands. Uh, if you start a shift, make sure you know where it is, so you can find it even if it's pitch black and dark in here. And then obviously, uh, calm your crowd, ask them to leave the hall slowly and don't panic and the usual. Yes, so um, there is a charging station for the duty deck, uh, which is in this tent uh, at the audio desk. I don't know if that's uh, everywhere the same, but... Uh, at some, in some tents, the charging station is uh, there backstage on the te technology over there somewhere. You will find it, but that's only relevant for the last shift of the day and the first shift of the day, where to get it from. Um, yeah, megaphone, we were there. Shift distribution, yes. Uh, this is something, the, uh, the last slide for today. Uh, we're going to distribute some more shifts today at 17.30 at the Herald desk, which is part of the speaker desk. If you, you can freely pick any uh, talk or any uh, group of talks that you're interested uh, in the next uh, day three, four, or five, and we would be more than happy if we would have you on stage and help us out with the heralding. Thanks for listening. Oh, wait, I forgot an important thing. I would like to introduce uh, the team. Uh, um, first, Katsatsi. She's uh, doing a lot of the office work in the back office and uh, scheduling shifts, making sure that we have all we need, that all the checklists are complete. Uh, amazing. Thanks for that. Which Doc is also a member of the team. He's the only Dutch guy in the team. He's the one that set this thing up for the last weeks and months. And I'm just a guy from Berlin that has some experience doing this, uh, so uh, that's why I'm here and uh, trying to, yes, make SHA 2017 more awesome than before, hopefully. 
uh, thanks for listening to my rant. Questions would be a good time to ask now. Otherwise, we're going to see each other at 17.30 at the speaker desk. What? Yeah, oh, yes, sure. I'm going to go back to the uh, URL slide. Uh, so you can install that. Yeah, the question was, what was the URL uh, of the uh, rocket chat? There it is. Yes, I know. Okay, so the server is heralds.events.ccc.de. And this will stay this way for the next years, hopefully. Uh, like, it's an open source Slack alternative hosted on the server of a friend of mine. No cloud involved, data privacy uh, uh, guaranteed, and after SHA's over, the database will be deleted and we'll set up a new instance for the next event. Promise. So, who of you has an Angel account already in the Angel system? Oh, great, all of you. So, this, yeah, perfect. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot. <laughs>